Okay, part two, because I went over my storage limit on my Mini 4, which has got 128 gigabytes of video, and uh, I mean storage, and I've been recording a lot of these scenes for my iPad. So, all right, so I kind of was ending off that, um, that the, the family um, has no sense, no, um, no, no sense, no sympathy, not the ability to contextually adjust their emotions to what the situation is. So the situation is, according to my great uncle, he's on his deathbed and the bratty child and the bratty granddaughter is in the room and not, are not under, they're not adjusting their behaviors for a situation of someone's grave. They just think, oh, he's at the hospital. I don't know if the clinic is still a hospital. I don't know. It's for for a long time, it was an outpatient facility with hospital-like stuff. So, whatever. Um, I don't know um, for sure. But um, for all intents and purposes, he's you know he's, he's you know he thinks he's dying, and there's no one reassuring him. No one's like you know looking at him. No one's engaging with him. Not to mention, he's not really caring about his own surroundings. So, this is um, kind of going back to yesterday. Um, it, it just got really bad. And my mother is now, now dealing with a situation where she didn't contact my uncle, my, my cousin's you know, um, father, who has been estranged um, with because he's had some m mental health issues. So he's not, you know, she didn't reach out, and it's it's all, um, my mother's falling apart at this point. And um, they get, they leave at six, because the, the, the very, you know, it's, it's almost like they put an announcement on the the um, PA like around the around six o'clock telling people they have to go so it's very strict. So my my mom goes home and brings my my aunt in law back at home and um, she's just gabbed me about the what is going on the same thirty something year old dirt just just kind of just twirling it like a twister and just keep bringing this shit up which is not the time to be talking about this stuff and relitigating the past because there's there were talks about my nana's will and stuff like that and i'm only saying this because this is what toxic families do go through in real life when when things don't go right so that comes up this, you know and, and my mother is not reining her in I gave him her tips to kind of ring her in, like, don't talk, don't talk on the ride, don't, um, don't bring up the past, like, just ring her in and just redirect her, and don't, just, just don't, because this anxiety is prolonging his recovery, I know for sure, and I'm on the spectrum, and I have empathy, which is kind of freaking hilarious, and, um, so, um, that's, that's, basically that um you would think that even a quasi christian if that's what the jw's are the child of this witness that is my my great aunt in law's belief and you know my mother's christianity and my non denominating great uncle you would think there would be some peace because i'm going to tell you back here at base i was getting anxious and I didn't want my mother to know that I was anxious once I found out that my my um closer aunt-in-law passed away because I used to know her in a you know former life you know that hit me because I'm like well she's all alone right now finding out what's going on and my cousin didn't know what was going on so as a result of all this this stuff I um I was like this this is a somber this is a this is a very somber, um, quiet but not. I, I wasn't crying because I can't even cry anymore. 
Um, but I just, I felt really, really blue. And I'm like, Mom, please get on this. Tell us what was going on. Because that, that was the thing. She wasn't updating me on a frequent basis like she did the previous thing. And the, the, and it was a lot of toxic crap that I'm receiving from the situation. Like, oh my God, what is my mother up to? Because I, I, you know, she could text me. She said some really wild stuff. Um, because she was really uh, upset, um, of what was going on. And, um. The, them two didn't get what my mother's gone through. She's gone through death of a person she hasn't seen in years. And that's not as important as what's going on with my uncle, who is still in recovery for f almost four days now. It's, um, yeah, it wasn't, it was a very quiet and somber Easter. And, um, um, I would have gone, I would have gone down, but I wouldn't be there for the whole day. And that's what I was hoping yesterday, given the, the good news we were hearing on, on Saturday, that he would, he would get, my spirits would be up. He is physically healthier, um, except for a few unfortunate, um, things that they had to keep him down. But we're, we're, we're hoping within the next, um, 30 minutes um, it's 9.34 right now as I'm recording this, so who knows what today will bring. Hopefully it's better than yesterday, I'm hoping, but it seems to, it seems to be very borderline, um, very depressed and toxic one day, feeling happier the next day than back to the day before, than the day before that one, and, and that's got to play a role in my mother. But what I was hoping prior to recording this on Easter, I was hoping, I was planning to do a quick shoot on Easter saying that maybe, maybe, um, my family's coming to their senses about the toxic family struggles, the borderline personalities, the narcissistic personalities, the antagonistic, um, fingerprint of their stuff, the, um, the understanding, the, um, the lack of boundaries, the, even enmeshment, I felt, I, we were hearing undertones of enmeshment of the way the, the cousin was raised by Manuna. So it's like, I'm just cringy. I, and these are things I can't say to them in their faces because then now we're just raised more red flags by enmeshment, lack of boundaries, poor boundaries, um, people just encroaching, um, walking over them, lack of empathy, a uh, little sympathy. And I'm like, my mother had suggested I be their unlicensed um, therapist, the autistic unlicensed therapist. The problem is, I'm not going to be nice with them. I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be really tough on them because they should know better. And I'm very, I'm very disappointed because after yesterday, the crap I was hearing from both of them, I'm like, if I were my mother, I would be getting to the house just around 10 o'clock, drop them, drop her off to, to Massachusetts, pick her, leave at six, because that's been kind of the thing, and just, like, not abandon her, but just get out, like, at six, you know, get, was it, six forty? just be home by seven sharp, because it's not that far from Hudson to, um, Merrimack, and just call it a day, like, like start doing the minimum stuff. Don't even be an emotional support for the patient or the patient's spouse, because at this point they don't really care, and they they're true. It's it's almost like what we're hearing is deathbed confessionals, but I'm not sure how true that is, because um, I don't know for sure. But this is not going good for him. I want him, I wanted him to recover. I want him to have a speedy recovery. But now the speedy recovery is just getting prolonged by drama and other people's problems. So I'm not very empathetic to what they're going through. And I was really hoping if I recorded this 24 hours ago with what I knew on Saturday, I'd be like, um, maybe this is be our turning point but that's a problem it's it's like thinking it's, it's just like wishful thinking um i was wishing too much and um 
there was, there was a phone call before they got down there, before my mother was going to leave the house. Of, uh, there was a spat between the two of them. So they were spatting off yesterday. And it was just like the Bickersons. They're just bickering on each other. And it's just like, good God. Um, so that's all I wanted to say in this, this little vlog. Um, it's unfortunate that um, it's come to this. And um, I'm, I'm not happy. I'm not happy for my family. And um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not open to hearing the other side. And it says, oh, they have a rough life. This is how you justify the toxic individual. And, that, and that's not that I'm shutting out because I don't want to hear what I want to hear. It's I don't want to hear that because that is not the fact that it's just you're enabling the toxic person to be more toxic. And I have dealt with so many toxic people in my life that I am not tolerating. Oh, well, they just had a rough day. Oh, well, she's on her period. Oh, she's expecting. Oh, she's doing this like that. It's just justifying the jerk by making you look like a jerk. And I'm fed up with that. This is literally an past platform today. And, um, I just feel bad for my mother. I feel bad for the situation. One of the things I hope that we all learn is families are toxic and we need to know how to identify them and how not to engage in this stuff because this is this is more common. There, Dr. Romani has claimed that, projected that one in three Americans are having undiagnosed um, narcissistic personality disorders. And... Um, that's what I think some of my members of my family have and um, some worse than others and some worse than others are clashing the ones that are a little bit and that's just it's not funny to watch it's sad so with that said thank you for watching um, I hope to have more news on this at a later time in a more positive sense till next time bye